This series has been put together to give you a real, accurate, warts and all insight as to what it's like in the world of lower league football. Just like in lower league football, and in fact any football, passion is always bubbling close to the surface, and sometimes that materialises in the form of bad language. There is swearing throughout this video, so viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to the Iron Diaries. This time, Braintree Town face off against Ipswich Town's under-21 squad in a game that could prove to be the most difficult of pre-season so far. This afternoon also marks the end of the pre-season campaign for the Iron, so it's one last opportunity for Angelo Harrop and his coaching staff to see how well prepared the team is before the season starts at Taunton in just over a week's time. Before kick-off, we were treated to a fantastic footballing display by two local grassroots teams, Grassroots football and community sport is something that manager Angelo Harrop holds dear to his heart. His own personal business, SCS or Sports Coaching Specialists, work to inspire children through sport. Working not only in the local community, putting on various different sports and summer camps, but also working in local schools as well. For the youngsters it's a fantastic opportunity for them to come along and play football in front of their friends and families who get to sit and watch on from the stands here at Cressing Road. And of course, it's also a fantastic opportunity for them to meet the first team as well. Braintree Town have always had a good track record of working within the local community, meeting and engaging with their fans and supporters, not only here but also when they're on the road as well. With a number of new additions joining the squad this season, Angelo Harp is keen to continue the hard work that they started in previous seasons. Thank you very much for talking to me. So, um... Obviously, you can't take part in any matches at the moment. You're carrying a pretty significant injury. Um, do you mind telling us about it? Essentially, I've ruptured my ACL along with a few other tendons and ligaments in my knee. Um, but the doctor's note was a lot longer. So, <laughs> we'll go with that one. I think I'm pretty sure people are impressed with severity. The professional footballers that have already been under the knife to get something like this sorted, it's slightly different with um, obviously lower league football and all the rest of it. So I was hearing earlier they were doing an announcement saying that they're putting something together to sort of help raise the funds for getting the op done and all the rest of it. You've got any idea of what the op's likely to cost? Um, I've had a few ballpark figures, but um, essentially with the with the with the damage that that we think has been done, um, looking at upwards of 15 to 20k. Obviously the club's making a gesture that they want to they wanna help out any way possible, which I mean, is it's, it's really a bit heartwarming for me because I haven't spent a lot of time here, I've only been here one year. Um, and only half a year at that because the injury happened in the, the January, February. But um, no, it's really good man. Hopefully, hopefully we can uh, you know, generate some, some capital to get done. Um, it's been a bit, it's been a bit of a difficult time since being injured because of, like you said, fresh food as opposed to non-league, it's a bit harder to you know, get us to you know, use the NHS or trying to go private, so it's a bit of a you know, sticky one, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's, looking, it's looking up for the time being. So when did you pick up the injury then? Um, yeah, so we're, again, me and the physio uh, will going back and forth for a few months trying to figure out pinpoint exactly when it happened because the timeline of events from January to February to March doesn't quite make sense medically speaking <laughs> so I injured myself first in January I think it was first game back after New Year's oh wait um, and then I thought it was something I had done already but I'd already injured my MCL a few years ago um, so I figured it was the same thing it was similar same pain same sort of you know like recovery type thing. So I did my recovery for three weeks and uh, this was just before we were going to play Colchester in the um, Essex Cup. So I wanted to play in that, but my physio, Matt at the time, he said, well, if you want to play that, you're going to have to play Tuesday night before so you know you can play. So I came back after three weeks, Tuesday night, played on Saturday, no, played Saturday away, played Tuesday night against Colchester and played Saturday the next week and then I redid it. This is in February. Um, I didn't really redo it. I just tweaked it again. Like in the second half of the match, I came off. I'm um, thinking nothing of it. It was fine. I walked off. Everything was fine. I got home and my knee swelled up for about four or five days. So that's when I realized that we had to, you know, 
just it was it was a bit more serious than I had originally. Obviously, last season, Braintree had an absolutely blinding season. I um, had a chat with Steve, the assistant manager, last week after the game, and he was telling me that he kind of saw the turning point when the team sort of really came out of the blocks being around Christmas time and all the rest of it. Obviously, from a manager's perspective and a player's perspective, it's slightly different, though. So when did you, as a player, think to yourselves, we've got something special going on this season? Um, I'd say this is... Uh... It'll, it'll probably echo in the change room with the rest of the players, but we sort of always knew we had something special because we had a decent group of guys together, and it was just a matter of putting together a string of results and keeping the momentum going. And um, once we did that, because leading up into Christmas, we were on a, we were doing pretty well, and we were like, it was kind of a joke, sort of like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, how long can this go on, type of thing, and then. Obviously, it, it, just kept, it kept going and going, and then obviously with that, you get you get belief that starts to get into the group, and then then it became sort of a staple. Obviously, we had a really good one at home, which which was a foundation for everything. So that being in the back of your mind, so we don't we're not going to lose at home, we're not going to lose at home, and then just doing enough to pick up points on the road. Um, it just the belief was there before, but the results kind of just backed it up. And then it, do, it was just from strength to strength to this. So we've always had a good group. Um, and we just got along, we got along really well as a group, which obviously helps do an the group. So, yeah, I think quite early on. Maybe a bit earlier than the coaches, but like, it didn't really sink in until we were like, okay, like, we've got, we've got something actually good going on. So let, let's make sure that we, we get something out of it. When you're not playing football on the pitch, what is it that you do during the day? What's your day job? Uh, I just <laughs> I just started working um, in insurance, uh, so I work at home. You've seen how the boys have played in pre-season so far and all the rest of it and stuff like that. Tonight's the last pre-season, right? So how do you feel the team are prepared now for going into the season? I think, again, I think we've got a good group of players, truthfully. I think... Um, We've got, we've got a lot of players in, a lot of players out, but I think we've done well to hold on to the piece of court. You know, we had some last year, had a good piece of there and there. Um, watching from, because I came to the first game of preseason, and watching this one, you can see that, you can see that there's, there's something being built as well. And again, it's the same as same as last year, really, um, which is similar in non-league. It's just a matter of being consistent, really. So if we can consistently string together results, then it could it could just be another fairy tale season like last year. But then it all comes down to just making sure we get we get off to a good start. But that was massive for us last year and then we just carried the momentum. So should be good. As you can hopefully tell from that, Willie can't wait to get on the pitch and start playing again. It's so sad when a player from lower league football gets injured like Willie has. He's got so much of a career ahead of him, but unfortunately the money's just simply not there to pay for the op that he needs. We've put together a GoFundMe page. You can find details of it in the description. We'd really, really appreciate it if you could take a few moments just to read a little bit more about Willie's story. Hopefully donate, share it with your friends. We'd be really, really grateful if you did. And we know that Willie would be chuffed as punch too. Make sure you're all prepped. Everyone arms around each other. We do it every time. Tuesday Simo, is that standing on Tuesday Simo? Here we come, boys. Come on, let's go. Set them levels high, mate. Set them levels high. Detail. Everyone involved together. Anyone that comes in our dressing room has to be involved. Young kids, adults, fucking Richard, everyone. I want you to remember this is the first game of our season. All right? Good energy around the park. Everyone rap like fuck when we lose the ball, but when we have it, have good quality. Don't give the ball away sloppy. If someone does, I don't want to hear, what the fuck is that? We do it the right way, walk past the tape. Keep the fucking ball next time, you. Go in your fucking header next time. You say it in the right way, all right? But the spirit in this team represents us out there. I want our fans to be fucking loving the way we play. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
Starting like we had a few new faces, which boys, we have got new faces. The shape, right, it's really interesting. This is exactly the same way, the way they play, as Worthing did it in the clubs against us. All right? So it's really hard for me to talk about shape when we haven't worked on it. But I feel like after 15, 20 minutes, we grew into the game. We fucking started to play some good football. We got more aggressive. So listen, from me, I'm, I'm happy with that half. There were certain times we looked a bit sloppy. Do you know where we looked most vulnerable? Does anyone know? Oh, our set pieces. Our set pieces. Our set pieces. Again, we haven't worked on it. So Tuesday, Thursday, would just be set pieces. All right? What's happened is Leon's staying back. Reggie's sitting on the edge. And it looks like we've got over cover. But as soon as they break, the players that are in the box just stay in the box. <laughs> and they break in fucking numbers. So what I'd say to you is when the ball gets delivered and you fucking miss your header or whatever happens, you've got to get yourselves back in. So like your position, George, at the minute, you're, we're loading it up there, and you're here, the ball gets played in, and then you're dropping in there, you've got to stay on the edge. So even though you've got Reg to that side and Leon back, you're just sitting in here, just mopping up. And trust me, when the ball gets headed out, you cannot give it away. The goal, Leon, you'll probably think this is harsh. The goal, it should have been from them, was from your shank of a pass. Do you know when it come out to you? And we fucking went safety back in, wrong side, they've headed it, and they've had three, four players to attack. Do you remember the one I'm on about? Yeah? Our boys, in general, play with really, but the effort and energy is fucking first class. There isn't one player for us that isn't putting the effort in. And I can always take that. You've been electric that half. You've been fucking, you, you're like a 21 year old out there. But what I'm so happy about, what I'm so happy about, is not only are you good on the ball, I knew that. I knew you'd be one of the best players on the ball in this league. But your fucking work rate off it, Reg has been excellent. And that was a question mark with you coming here. I thought, is he going to be able to do the fucking, the dogged side? And you've done it. That's 45 minutes. Yeah? I feel like, in possession sometimes, we work so hard to win it back. And then we go, do you know what, we'll fucking launch it. We've got a fucking keeper who's kicking his fright in. If the ball goes to the centre half and you feel uncomfortable, turn out, go back to Simon. Because in our team, we get a lot of good attacks from his kicks because of our wing backs. 
So if you ever feel in trouble, ball comes up and you think, oh, I've just got to fucking shake it. No, you ain't. Let it go, back to Simo, and then we recover as a team. Okay? Set pieces for us attacking have been diabolical. Why has it been diabolical for us? If you know the way I manage, what would I say? When have we fucking listened? If you're not going to win the header, what do I expect? Not one of their centre-halves. And by the way, this is the most weakest physical-wise. They won't even be near what our league is. Not one time have I seen ball come in and know your young lad. Fucking bang. Young lad goes fucking up in it by a bus. Because I tell you now, if we played against you, your 23s at Colstar, in an FA Cup game, sorry, not FA Cup, Essex Senior, that you may have watched, Fucking go and smash people early doors. Same with you, not one time. You should be fucking a little scratch, a little bit of blood, nothing. All the centre halves in a minute have gone up, nice and friendly. So the next set piece that comes in, if you're not going to win the ball, you're going to take three or four with you. And I guarantee you, the young centre half, you're going to go, I ain't going to win that next one, I'm staying well out of it. We are far too fucking nice from our set pieces. So this is the plan. Either go and head the ball and score a goal. If not, go and let them know that they're not going to touch the ball the next time round. Do we understand that? You might think, fuck me, that's old school. Yes, it fucking is. We have to be far more aggressive from our set pieces. Is that fair? Rob, is anything for you? Just reiterate the, the, the <clears> hard work that we're doing to win the ball back. But I think we've got to get in our head. We've actually got to work harder then to keep it. Because we're fucking, the, pre the pressing... It's fantastic. First 15 took a while just to get used to the maybe the new players and again a new system. We work our nuts off to win it back and then we think, oh we've won it back, we're right now. Nah mate, we've got to work hard again to give options and, and keep the ball, which by the way we have done it in good patches. Just want to stand a little bit more bang about us in the middle the middle. It's difficult because again, if you had that, you wouldn't be with us. Mm. Have a little bit of both. Yeah? I don't care if you're five foot fucking five, ten but you're gonna be like that and then be good on the ball, yeah? They want happy legs all right? Yeah, it's a good game for us, isn't it? It's tough, fans are loving it. Good game from the sides. We ain't scored yet. Yeah, let's try and get something going. Let's try and get a bit excited for the fans. Let's get on our feet then, boys. Up the iron, let's go.
Thanks, John, very much for talking to us. Um, I thought it was a decent performance tonight. Have you guys got many more pre-season games lined we have. up? We've got three. We play. Uh, we've just come back from playing Sunderland over in Greshams in Norfolk on Tuesday. Um, we've obviously played yourselves tonight. We've got Norwich next Tuesday, Tottenham next Friday, and then we've got Stormarket the following week, and then we go into our league then. So uh, there's a really good run of games for us at the moment, which we're all building up and trying to you know, get the match fitness into the boys. Um, how do you think as a team you're getting on in pre-season? Um, listen, it's, it's hard work for them because we're a really young group. Um, you know, we've got 17 year olds there playing tonight, you know, first year scholars, second year scholars, first year pros as such. So we've done that on purpose in a way really to bring the age down, to give them opportunity. It carried on at the end of last season and it's obviously now going into pre-season. So you're going to get your ups and downs with it, which we've found already. Um, but I just think at the moment, we're just starting to show a little bit more consistency with the play. And um, I thought defensively today, I thought we were very, very good against a strong outfit, um, especially the way the Green Street play. Um, I was really pleased, especially with the two centre-halves coming up against, you know, mature men. Um, they're only young boys, and uh, I thought they handled it really well. It's interesting you say that because one of the take my biggest takeaways for me, I guess, is that you're right, they are a young team, but they were, I thought, very, very imposing considering that, as you say, there's some more senior players in Braintree and some physically big players. I think that Ipswich held a pretty good or gave a pretty good account of themselves tonight in the way that they played. Was that, have you got everything that you expected out of them tonight or is there still more that no, you want to work absolutely. on? Yeah, we had them in this morning. Um, we've done a lot of defensive work because we know I've been here with Colchester as a first team and I know it's a tough place, tough grounds, and once you get down that hill, you get penned in, it's really tough. So we've done a lot of defensive work this morning. Um, we still want to take the ball, as you see, we still want to take the ball when we can under pressure, we try and align ourselves with our first team. You see how well our first team are doing at the moment, and that's what our gaffer wants, taking the ball under pressure. But also getting the units nice and tight, um, which we haven't had as such. We didn't have on Tuesday against Sunderland, so um, there was a lot of work put in over the last couple of days to try and get them, them units tight as a, as a group. And I thought that, that re worked really well for us tonight. How does it work with an under 23 squad? Do you play in your own dedicated under 23s league or do you sort of sit off of the professional first no, team? No, we, we're in a, a PDL2, so we've got like a, a South division. So we play like the likes of like Millwall, uh, Charlton, we go across to Wales, we play like Swansea, Cardiff. We then go up north, um, so we play one game with a, a PDL2 north, which is like you. I know Burnley's gone into Cat 1 now at the moment, but like your Birmingham's and stuff like that, um, we were playing last year, Coventry's. So we, we generally play around about 26 games, and then we go into a Premier League Cup, so then you, you can draw like, I think we drew Crystal Palace in a Premier League Cup, so we'll get them better games as well for us, a better programme, and I think we're also trying to get more of these, you know, the non-league, uh, the um, number twos, number threes, you know, your, your stone mark, as I've spoke about, yourselves, Maybe not National League, because obviously they don't really want to play 21s, but you step 2, step 3s, step 4s, we try and get a couple of them through the season as well. So we're, we're trying to get the balance of men's football and also the, the Cat 1 and the Cat 2 football. How does it work with the first team? Do you guys, once you've got a player to a point where they're sort of, if you like, in for other words, ready, can the first team just come and take your players? Or? Yeah, we've got, again, um, the gaffer, we work really closely with the first team and the gaffer and his staff. Um, there's three of our guys over there at the moment. Um, there was seven involved last weekend in their two games. So they, they do get a lot of exposure. The gaffer uses them in training as well. So it's a day-to-day -day talk, really, um, with the guys. And we'll come back from the game. Um, they're obviously abroad at the moment. They'll be travelling back over the weekend and we'll get we'll have a chat Monday. They'll always ask about how the boys are getting on. Um, and we just have conversations that way and what guys playing better, who's doing well um, and what guys that the gaffer needs. Firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to all the fans that come tonight. I thought the crowd was excellent. Obviously, a shame we didn't, you know, didn't score a goal, but I think you can see what we're trying to do. A lot of quality in our, in our squad this year. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really good workout. Obviously, playing Ipswich, good side, good young players. And I think massive credit to our players, it should be exciting times for, for Bainshaw going forward, like it was last year. Um, and you know, let's see, let's see how we do. So, thanks very much for talking to me. Um, 
So that's it, three seasons done now. Um, that was the last game tonight. Would you say that they were the toughest competition that you've had so far? Um, I, I felt that the game against Hornchurch was tougher in terms of, you know, yes, they're full time, but it was more realistic in terms of the level that we play. So tonight was a lot of passing, a lot of tactical sort of awareness in the game. But the whole church game is more physical when in our league. That's that's what we've got to respect. But again, what a great test for us tonight. Next up is Taunton. Taunton, yeah. So um, a bit of a uh, bit of a journey to start the season with. I know that you guys are travelling up in the morning. What does that journey in the morning up for the players? What does it do to them? Is it like coach for that long? Yeah, I think ideally, yes, you'd stay overnight. Obviously, last year we stayed four times overnight, and we ended up losing every game. So, you know, we had a chat with the chairman and, uh, you know, he said, you know, why don't we try, try to coach in the morning? Obviously, 7 o'clock, we've got to get up. But it's great, you know, we'll have, a, we'll have a good coach journey up there. You know, I speak to the players, I'll have everything organised. So, on that journey, four hours, we'll be talking about tactics and what I expect from individuals. And as a group as well. It's a tough, really tough fixture, first game of the season. But, listen, the first game for me is, a, is an exciting one for our new team. Um, and it'll be our, uh, you know, an eye opener for a lot of players. Um, but hopefully we can start really well and, and positive as well. So I had a chat with Steve after the game last week, and um, Steve uh, said that um, there's still work to be done, there's still positions to be filled, and all the rest of it, you still got stuff to do. Are you confident that you have got the right people, either as trialists or on the pitch, or are you still looking for additional? people to back up the team you've got so far? hundred percent we're looking for, for, for players to, you know, we'll evolve as a team. Uh, we're definitely not going to I feel like the loan market for, for us at the club is, is crucial. We brought two lads in today, one from Luton and one from uh, Colchester United. So, you know, they'll, they'll improve us, but we're not going to have a squad of 17, 18 players, which, you know, is crazy at this level, but we've got our budget and the resources we have as a football club. You know, I only want players here that I trust and believe in. I don't want players here for just to make the numbers up. That's not how I work. So uh, I want, you know, players to warrant being at our football club and, and, you know, good quality players as well. So we'll go as a small squad, have a few lone players come in and, you know, let's, let's see how we do. A couple of guys that we've spoken to in um, the use of the previous games have said that they work for your business, SES, yeah. that side of this. What does um, what does the middle of the season do to your business? What does it do to the guys here? Because obviously, I mean, a Saturday long long journey to Swansea is not too bad because yeah. hopefully most people are working yeah. Saturdays. But the rest of the time, what kind of impact does that have for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I've got three three players that work for my business. Sports coaching, you know, we provide of schools. So listen, the midweek games are really, really tough. There's been games where, you know, myself have turned up, which is the manager, which is which is essential. But players have had to turn up later on, and that means preparation isn't as good. But listen, that's where we're at. We're a part-time football club, and you know, work probably does come first than, than football. Um, and it, it does make it really tough because for me, preparation is crucial really really important to, to succeed for what we need to do but ultimately the week games are really really tough for us and sometimes what you want to achieve can't always can't always happen so um but, but welcome to the non league that's why we love it you know that um that professionalism sometimes isn't there yes we want it but again it's, it's about achievement which is sometimes impossible I don't want to keep beating the drum because i've asked every single person this question but last season the where you finished up, obviously exceeded expectations for an awful lot of people and all the rest of it. So, as quick and short an answer as you can possibly give to this one, yes. Where would you be happy to finish this season? Um, for me, we need to improve on last season, which is a big, big call. I'm not a manager that's going to sit here and say, you know, you know, we, yeah, we overachieved last year. Listen, we did overachieve, but but we are going to going to give it another go. We're going to be competitive. Anything I do. In football, I always want to be a winner. It could be a training session, it could be a match. But I only want winners at this football club. So, you know, I put pressure on my shoulders. We want to, we want to improve on last season and be 
very, very competitive as a football club. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe to be alerted every time we release new content. We'd also love to hear your feedback, so please leave your comments below and we'll try and address them in future episodes.